Homosexuals have always been a favorite target of bigots in our society, haven't they? You know, if it isn't for the ones who simply go out and say like, oh, our imaginary friend has forbidden your behavior and you are damned, those people we can of course just laugh out of school because they're so ridiculous. Then you get the ones who think that they are being clever by hiding their uh, homophobia, their bigotry under thin veneer of rationality, saying that homosexuality is unnatural, for example, or abnormal. As if anything we do in our current society could be called natural anymore anyway. And besides, when is the last time you went out into the wild and you saw cute little duckies and froggies sitting in front of tiny little digital cameras spewing hate speech? I can't remember ever seeing that. And finally, of course, why would you think it is unnatural anyway? If you look at the animal kingdom, they're all at it. And it's not just primates either. So that argument falls flat on its face. And the same goes for the argument that it's supposedly abnormal. As if norm normality would be something like a single point within the space of all possible human sexual behavior. Of course not. Normal human sexual behavior is a spectrum of behaviors and whilst we might agree that uh, sexual activity between a male and a female consenting adult would fall in the middle of that spectrum, that does by no means mean that homosexual behavior has to therefore fall outside that spectrum. And of course there's plenty of evidence to uh, suggest that it would fall inside the spectrum simply because there are so many human cultures in which homosexuality is no problem whatsoever. So all of that is complete and utter bunkum. But there are some bigots who are a bit cleverer than that. They think they can subvert science and theories of evolution and natural selection to support their homophobia, their bigoted cause. And I'm going to show you why this is wrong. Now first of all I have to make an acknowledgement here because it is by no means determined yet that homosexuality is determined by genetics. It could also be due to environmental factors in the womb or other factors at all or combinations of these. But we certainly have to take seriously the possibility that there is a genetic factor involved. And then of course these people seem to make sense. After all homosexuality is a behavior that does not lead to reproduction. So how could natural selection possibly select for homosexuality? Well, all this sort of argument shows is a complete lack of understanding of what natural selection actually does and how it works and what it actually works on. You see, as Richard Dawkins pointed out in his book The Selfish Gene, basically what natural selection works on is how genes express themselves in their environment, typically by producing bodies or behaviors or other changes to the environment on which natural selection then works by either allowing the individuals that possess those genes to procreate or not. But what you mustn't forget are two things. First of all, genes do not strive, for want of a better word, because it's anthropomorphical and of course genes are not little conscious entities, but for want of a better expression, genes do not strive to reproduce themselves, to make a copy of themselves. All that a successful, all that uh, makes a gene successful is if it is if it manages to succeed in causing there to be more identical copies of itself to be in the world. Now there's a very subtle but important difference between ensuring that copies are being made of the gene itself or ensuring that copies of itself, identical copies of itself in the world can succeed. And I'll get to an example in a minute. And secondly, what they also forget 
is that this is a game of statistics. With those two realizations under your belt, you'll start realizing why the argument is flawed. Now I'm going to paint you a scenario and it's a bit like this. First of all, first you need to realize that whenever you reproduce, you manage to pass on 50% of your genes. And then of course on top of that comes the chances that those 50% of your genes, the chances that your offspring have in surviving to adulthood themselves. But say you've got brothers and sisters, you've got siblings and they manage to reproduce. Now typically on average this would result in them as they share 50% of your genes and their offspring share 50% of their genes their offspring would typically share 25% of your genes. So there is already some benefit to be had in assisting in making the offspring of your siblings successful. And that is regardless of circumstances. Now imagine a circumstance in which if you produced offspring and your sibling produced offspring the chances that both of them would not survive were huge. But if for whatever reason you did not produce offspring and your sibling did and you would have some sort of tendency that would make you inclined to help your sibling make their offspring more successful increasing the chances of their offspring significantly that's where the statistics start coming in. If you can increase the chances so that the success rate of that over their 25% offspring are better than the success rate you would have over your offspring competing with their 25% offspring, then such behaviors will actually be actively selected for in natural selection. So imagine a trait that would lead to asexuality for example as you can see in bees where the worker bees are asexual or in mammals homosexuality where sexual activity is not gone but is directed to individuals which, with whom you cannot actually reproduce leaving you to express other behaviors that will help you help your siblings raise their offspring and suddenly you can see where the benefit lies and suddenly you can see how natural selection could in fact select four traits that are related to homosexuality and homosexuality itself. So arguments, facile arguments against homosexuality on the basis that it cannot work because you wouldn't reproduce are just stupid and ignorant.